my fellow Americans. Not long ago, I received a letter from a woman in the Midwest. She wrote, Dear Mr. President, in my humble way, I am writing to you about the crisis in Vietnam. I have a son who is now in Vietnam. My husband served in World War II. Our country was at war. But now, this time, it's just something that I don't understand. Why must young Americans, born into a land exultant with hope and with golden promise, toil and suffer and sometimes die in such a remote and distant place? The answer, like the war itself, is not an easy one. But it echoes clearly from the painful lessons of half a century. Three times in my lifetime, in two world wars and in Korea, Americans have gone to far lands to fight for freedom. We have learned at a terrible and a brutal cost that retreat does not bring safety and weakness does not bring peace. And it is this lesson that has brought us to Vietnam. The French, however, found themselves outmanned and outfought, crippled by a lack of air power and battered by superior artillery. The French position was surrounded and overrun by General Joff's forces. The outcome was inevitable. This defeat was a crushing blow to the French and brought about the end of the Indochina War. Two months later, the armistice agreement was signed. Vietnam was partitioned, Cambodia and Laos were neutralized. The Russian communists were quick to congratulate the victors, Ho Chi Minh and his brilliant General Zhao. 15 years later, this same general was determined to repeat his victory, this time at Khe Sanh. Many times I'm asked what part I think Quezon will play in the history of our country. And it's almost impossible for me to evaluate it since I was so close to the situation. However, I can tell you a little bit about it. And perhaps the place we should start is with an orientation of its location and some of the features around it. Quezon, as you know, is located eight to 10 miles from the Sapone River, which is the boundary between Laos and South Vietnam. It's south of the demilitarized zone and has around it uh, certain hill masses, which control some of the infiltration routes coming down in this general area. In the summer of 1967, Navy CBs were busy expanding the airstrip at Khe Sanh. Since Highway 9 was the only road in the area, the airstrip would provide the only other link to the outside. Beside the CBs, a battalion of Marines was stationed at a garrison near the airfield. The battle for Khe Sanh was still several months away and the atmosphere was quite peaceful. For months, Marine recon patrols had very little contact with the enemy. But in December, intelligence reported a heavy military buildup. Two divisions of North Vietnamese regulars were positioning themselves in the valleys around Khe Sanh. General Westmoreland, then the commander of the U.S. forces in Vietnam, decides Khe Sanh has too much strategic value to let fall to the enemy. The base is reinforced with more Marines. They're used to take and hold several hills around the airstrip, assuring the U.S. forces of excellent artillery positions if and when the enemy attacks. On the 19th of uh, January, there was a recon patrol which had gone out in this general area of, uh, north of Hill 881 North and uh, ran into considerable trouble and it, uh, it really developed into uh, 
quite a tense situation, but eventually we were able to uh, get them out and brought them back to Hill 881 South. So the next day, uh, it was decided that we should go out and clean up this enemy force, which had uh, evidently come in the 881 North area. So we sent one of the companies from 881 South towards 81 North, and they uh, banged head on into what uh, evidently was a NVA battalion. This uh, uh, was a day-long fight, and by nightfall they were still in contact and uh, heavy action. And uh, with nightfall coming on, we withdrew them back to Hill 881 South. We had plans to go out the next day, but then on the morning of the 21st, about 0500 in the morning, the base received uh, heavy mortar, rocket, and artillery fire. Almost simultaneously, Hill 861 came under attack from about a battalion-sized NBA force, and that no sooner got started than down here in Quezon Village, a uh, CAC unit came under attack uh, by about a battalion. So we had three things going at once, and naturally uh, my concern was with all of these forces which are around me. As you can well imagine, I began to become concerned that they might start closing the base. However, it didn't take very long to really upset me when and a few minutes later after this whole thing is boiling to a pot that the ammo dump went completely up and there were the rounds flying all over the place. March 14th, the anniversary of General Jaup's victory at Dien Bien Phu. The U.S. artillery and airstrikes continue. Time is running out for General Jaup. Recon flights now show the North Vietnamese withdrawing. The Marines take the offensive and move on the enemy positions. Highway 9, which had been controlled by the North Vietnamese, is opened, and American reinforcements begin pouring in. All that's left now is the cleanup operation. <laughs> 